What are these even for? Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. My friend Brent sent me these Create-A-Color, Create-A-Color, I don't know how to say it. They're the Nero Deep Black Pocket Set. They're an oil-based charcoal pencil. He wanted to see what I thought about them. I looked online to see what, like the, the manufacturers are pushing, like what benefit to the would be in using these. One, they say that it has a shiny finish. So I guess if working with graphite, that's gonna be convenient because it's going to match the graphite better. Like if you were to use charcoal, and graphite, you can really see the matte finish of the charcoal versus the graphite. It's pretty obvious which was which that and they don't, the charcoal doesn't stick that well to graphite if you have many layers down. So that might be something that is really cool with these. That's something I'm going to test in the future, but I think that's probably what why that would be a benefit. The other thing is that they push that they're water resistant and smudge proof. Smudge proof means it doesn't blend well. So you're not going to use a blending or shading tool. It really isn't blending. It's not moving. It's not doing anything. So that was, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about that. So I decided because I knew that they didn't smudge, let's try it with odorless mineral spirits and see if I find any benefit in using these versus a colored pencil. Like why wouldn't I just use a black colored pencil or why wouldn't I just use charcoal? So those were the questions I had going into this that I wanted to find out. We're going to head into the studio and try these out. As always, this project is available. It is in real time over on Patreon. I know some artists, when they're trying a new medium, they will start out with color swatches and just play around with things that way. That is never of interest to me. I just don't have fun with it. So I like to come up with something that is super simple, but it's an actual project. That is what I'm doing here. The grapes are great because I've got some really light lights, some really dark, dark areas, some detail in keeping clean edges and such, but I get to try to create that wood grain look. I, I've got all kinds of textures on, in this project. So I'm starting with that large block that it came, the set came with. You can see it is super, super gritty. I wasn't sure if this would blend out well or not. So it's all an experiment. And that's really what so much with art comes down with is experimenting, figuring out what works well for you, what you like and what you don't like. So here I am using the odorless mineral spirits. I was pretty impressed with how well that blended out. If you use ink tents or if you had used colored pencil and you had something start out that grainy, you are not going to typically get it to blend this well. So I was impressed at this stage. Now when I blend it out with the odorless mineral spirits, it's it lightens it up. It's not as dark as what I want that end result to be. So it took a few layers to really get this down to super, super black. Now I tested this out with the extra soft, the medium, and the hard pencil leads that came in this set. The extra soft by far was my favorite. I felt that I was able to get good detail with it. It wasn't so soft that I couldn't get a sharp point or fine detail. And all of the pencils were pretty dark. I mean, it was very obvious that the harder lead wasn't as dark as the extra soft, but as far as the way that I layered it, I didn't find any real need to have to use those lighter leads. The extra soft really did everything I needed it to. I'm working in sideways here, just following the texture of the wood platter or whatever this these grapes were sitting on. Now, I was impressed too when I blended things out, a lot of the pencil strokes that did smudge away some, so it wasn't too harsh. Look how soft that is. So that was a pretty big deal. If I had done that in colored pencil, you would still see the direction of those pencil marks in most cases. This blended out really, really smooth. But then on the flip side, I'm thinking, well, okay, now it's too dark and I don't have texture. Look at what happens with the eraser. Even with blending with the odorless mineral spirits, this was able to really lift a decent amount of that pigment. So that was a huge bonus for me. Much more so than what I typically experience with colored pencil. If I'm gonna use an eraser with colored pencil, it generally needs to be the Faber-Castell Perfection eraser. It's like an ink eraser, so it's a bit more harsh. This was just your normal white pen pencil eraser and it worked great. I mean, it's never gonna pull that paper back up to white, white, but it lifted a lot. So now I put down some glassine to protect the the paper from the oils of my skin and not blood, blend or smudge or anything too much. While it, it is listed as smudge proof, if you run your hand across the side, it will smudge onto your hand. 
it's kind of annoying in that it doesn't really blend or smudge well with like blending tools or anything like that, but don't get your hand on it or it'll end up all over the side of your hand. Not that you should be resting your hand on your artwork anyway, but I still thought that was kind of a funny thing. I'm using a smaller brush here for the outer edges to keep those clean and then a larger brush to blend the inside. You can see I was initially having a bit of a challenge going way too dark. That grape is really dark. So I'm not positive at this point. I really wasn't sure, okay, am I going to be able to lighten that up, whether it be with maybe an electric eraser or a white colored pencil. These are oil-based, so using a white colored pencil, which is oil and wax-based, should work well in theory. We're going to have to wait and find out on this. Really quick, are you trying to follow along and this is just moving too fast? Check out Patreon for as little as $4 a month. You will get this video in real time in addition to over 300 of my past videos and a new one every single week. The link with more information to that is in the video description. And I'm just working one grape at a time initially to get the hang of how dark I can go, how light do I need to leave different areas. But really, once I blended with OMS, watch this, I don't end up with much definition between the lights and the darks. It just kind of all smudges together. So that was definitely a difference between these and working with colored pencil. With colored pencil, it was more obvious where I have something light or dark. This, you smudge over it and it really blends out. It blends out really, really well, almost too well. So it's something that you have to, to consider. It's not like blending a colored pencil with OMS. It's almost somewhere between what you would expect with blending a watercolor pencil with watercolor, where that really blends out and the pigment spreads everywhere, and a colored pencil with OMS. It kind of falls in the middle there. I found too, if I had picked up some of the, the black pigment onto the paintbrush with the OMS, I could use that to sort of stain an area to where it didn't get too dark. And I played around a lot with using the harder lead versus the soft lead. You can see there, there, there is the softer lead. So it's not as dark. If I was more careful in how I layered, then I found there to be more benefit in the light and the dark. But if I put the light down and then the dark right next to it and blend it over them, they both just smudged completely together into a one colored mess. I really lost any definition between the lights and the darks. So you have to be much more careful here, I think, when you blend than when you blend with colored pencil. With colored pencil, let's say I had a white area and a light blue area, a white area and a dark blue area. When I smudge those together, the dark blue would smudge into the white if I wasn't careful, but not to this extent. This will, that, the dark areas will just take over the light really quick. So be aware of that as you're layering. It may seem like common sense, but when I'm, when you're used to working with colored pencil, you can be a little less careful with that. So I had figured out pretty quickly, go ahead and let the light areas do that, let them dry with the OMS, then go on top with the dark areas and be more controlled with them. So the great thing about this project is I realized, I learned a lot as far as like this, layer it, layer, blend the light one, and then go on top with the dark separately and blend that separately. So I think in the future, when I do something that is much, much more detailed, I'm going to be able to control it better. And if I had just played around with doing color swatches, I wouldn't necessarily have learned that lesson. And I think that's an important thing and making these an enjoyable medium to work in, at least for me. So see, now that that's dry, I can go over with the dark areas and have more control in keeping the light areas light. I just have to make sure when I blend, don't completely blend over those light spots. Now that this is dry, I can come back through and really define those shadows. You just have to do several layers on the areas you want really dark. Now, this was the cool thing. I pulled out an old electric sharpener, or not sharpener, eraser. I have not used this in years. Had to change the batteries. So look how much that's pulling up. And this is blended out with OMS. If I had used, let's say, a water-soluble graphite pencil and I blended with water, it's not going to pull up. It's not going to get as light as what this is getting. I was so impressed with the results I got with that electric eraser. Then I came back through, did a few little bit more with the detailing. That electric eraser, though, I was so excited to see how well it performed over areas that had been blended with OMS. I would expect this to erase decently well without being blended with OMS. But what happens usually when you blend with OMS, it almost, it stains the paper. So I thought that it would have stained it darker, but it, a lot of that color lifted off. 
or color pigment, whatever we want to call it. I'm not good at the words. So defining those, getting the darks a bit darker. I think you can get a really nice sketchy look with these, but also this, the dark really is amazingly dark. Now your colored pencils can be that dark too. It's just that this blended a lot faster to get this much with the dark blacks, this size with colored pencil would have taken me probably a day longer than what it took with this project. This project I only spent a couple of hours on. Now I'm using my Derwent Drawing Chinese white pencil. This is the most white, opaque white pencil, colored pencil that I have. And look how well it, it shows up against this. So people will often ask me with graphite, can I put white highlights, whether it be with ink or with colored pencils? Yes, but it's pretty noticeable that they're a different medium. They don't look that much like they go together. This, that was not the case here. To me, it looks like the white colored pencil and that black oil-based charcoal, they look like they're, they're the same medium in the finished piece. I feel like they, they just blended together seamlessly. So I'm really excited. My next project with these, and I will be using these again. I did like them once I got the hang of them. At first I was thinking, I'm not sure. But once I got the hang of them, I can definitely see getting some pretty cool artwork done with them. Now, one thing I do want to bring up, a lot of people from some of the stuff I saw online, they were saying that because these were water resistant or smudge proof, that they would be good to do like an outline and then put watercolor over it or a watercolor wash. I tried that. These smudge with water still. It it, so you end up with kind of a muddy coloration. It doesn't blend like you saw with the OMS, but it does smudge enough that it's going to discolor your watercolor. It doesn't look good. It's not something that I would recommend unless you are going for a very dirty kind of grungy look. In, in most cases, if you're going to do an, like you want dark black outlines and you're going to do a watercolor wash on top, I would go with a waterproof ink. I don't think that this is an ideal, like I really don't see any benefit to using this over a water, an actual waterproof ink because this did smudge and it did discolor the watercolor when I tested that out. And I did test that over areas that I had blended with OMS and areas that I did not blend with OMS. I used it on a separate piece of paper, both smudged, both discolored the watercolor. So again, would not, I don't think that this is an ideal medium as an outline base layer for watercolor. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Day, week, week. I don't do them every day. It feels like it. There's four. There's four a week, plus Patreon. So that's like five.